Hey what's up you guys, it is Harrison and welcome to School of Swipe. So today we are going to talk about the third series and complex numbers. So we're going to be talking about argon diagrams, we're going to be talking about you know modulus and argument. So yeah, this is going to be the third act. So let's start. So um, argon diagrams. Every complex number can be plotted onto an argon diagram. It's basically where you have a y, normally you have a y axis and the x axis and you know y is vertical, x is horizontal but you know in the argon diagram they, they changed it and instead of the vertical axis being y they changed it to the imaginary part. The x axis, what is usually called x, now they now label it as the real part. So you know all imaginary numbers, or complex numbers sorry, have a real part imaginary part so you can just break it down and look at the coefficient of you know the part that has no i in front of it at the back of it and the part that has an i there so you can just like extract it out and you can plot a coordinate with it so when, when we see we have something like 1 plus 3i so we can call it 1 comma 3 right and if you see something that has only a real part but no imaginary part we just call it we just put the imaginary part is zero if the real part is zero if there's no real part we just put the first coordinate to be zero so as you can see we have our three complex numbers well actually one of them isn't but bear with me um as you can see we have our three numbers right here and we can plot them on the coordinates we can have coordinates for them so so we can also plot, plot them here so you see our red one our blue one and our green one so um i think that should be fairly straightforward but okay so Instead of x, y coordinates, how else can we use? What else can we use to describe these points? So we have our modulus and our argument. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like navigating, like directions. So instead of saying like move eight meters to the right and ten meters, instead of moving like left, right, up, down, north, south, east, west, you can say um I want you to move south, southwest, southwest, um and go that way for for ten kilometers. So it's kind of like. I'm telling you which direction to go and how long to go in that particular direction. So similarly, we always, but we, in this case, we always start at the origin. So I'm like telling you the argument, which is like which direction to face, you know, the angle it makes counterclockwise with the real axis. So something like this is counterclockwise. So if you want to go clockwise, it becomes a negative angle. Okay, so modulus always has to be a positive number. Um, yeah, and it's just how far away you are from the origin. It's the distance that you are from the origin and it cannot be a negative number. So again, argument, not that, it's it's just uh, the direction that you're taking. Okay, so let's talk about how to calculate the modulus and the argument. So, um, so how do you calculate it? So first of all, um, modulus, it's pretty simple. Again, it is the distance from your point to the origin or the origin to a point. So um, you can just use Pythagoras theorem. You you have I, I like to use x coordinates, y coordinates, but you know what I mean. Um, so your x coordinates is one and your y coordinates is three. So that's like your horizontal and vertical parts. So with Pythagoras theorem, a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. So when you just put that in, like one and three, and then you just square everything throughout. So you have r equals to square root ten. Yeah. So okay. So uh, now you now we are going to calculate um, the argument. So first of all, we can't. I I rather not just calculate it straight off the bat. I rather calculate alpha, but um, we have to be careful with which quadrant it is in. But let's just talk about a simple case where it is in our first quadrant. Okay. So if it's in in the first quadrant, we just use tangent inverse y over x. So in this case, we have our. We have our 3 and a 1, so what I will do is just tangent inverse 3 over 1 to get tangent inverse 3 and you know just put that into your calculator and you get your answer. Yeah. Okay, so um, yes, what about quadrants? Uh, just basically follow this chart. So basically uh, we have our first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant and fourth quadrant and these quadrants are depending which where the points fall in regards to the quadrants depends on whether the x coordinate is positive or the y coordinate is positive or like both are negative, you know that kind of thing. So um let's just talk about that. So x x y both positive is the first quadrant. 
if your x is negative but your y is positive, it's your second quadrant. And if both of them are negative, it's your third quadrant. And if your x is positive and your y is negative, it's the fourth quadrant. You can just sort of see where it is on on you know on the axis. Okay, so um, so everything argument is always defined like the default direction of argument of of the direction that you're they're calculating from is counterclockwise with respect to the horizon the positive x axis. So, okay, so I'm just gonna clear everything for a moment. Okay. So everything is defined. Shoot. Okay. So here you have your real axis, your positive x axis. Okay. And argument is defined like what angle it makes with the positive x axis, counterclockwise. So yeah, it just makes like whatever angle it does. So from zero to pi, it usually goes this way. And gen generally, your this angle has to be between sorry negative pi and pi. So how do you want so you can't go this way. You can't do that. You have to instead go the other way around. And it has to be defined as a negative number because you're going the opposite direction, you're going clockwise now. So um I hope you understand what I'm talking about. So hence if you have so okay. So let's say you do tangent inverse, and what what usually happens is I will calculate alpha, but I, just by using the tangent inverse y over x method, okay? And then I'll check which quadrant it is in, and depending on the quadrant, I may get, you know, maybe if it's this, I'll just take pi minus alpha, or I'll just take, you know, minus alpha. Oh, you can just call it alpha, you can call it theta, um, it's, it's about the same to me. Okay, so an example, let's just go to an example question. So, um, first of all, find modulus z when z is 4 minus square root 3i. Um, so you have z, minus, z equals to 4 minus square root 3i, so you just take these two things and you square it, um, and you should just get square root 19 and that's your modulus. Alright, so for our argument, I'm just going to calculate alpha first. So uh, alpha is tangent inverse y over x. In this case, our y is negative, but the modulus should take care of that. So and then now we have to check which quadrant it is in. So since x is positive and y is negative, so we realize that our number is in the fourth quadrant, which is right here. So I'll just take the negative version of of zero point four eight six, and there we have our argument. Okay, so um mod an argument of z. So if z is this, so what I can do is, it's the same thing. Generally, modulus is quite easy uh, to do, easy to understand. You just square root the, the x part and the y part, and you should get this. And as for alpha, you do this. So you don't, you really don't need to worry about the negative sign. So don't worry about the negative sign because square root 3, and tangent inverse becomes pi over 3. Okay, so so as we look at which quadrant it is in again, um, a negative x-axis but a positive y-axis means it's in the second quadrant. So we just take our argument is pi minus alpha, alpha is right up here, uh, pi minus pi over 3, you get 2 pi over 3. Alright. So um, if you need to take a break, take a break. But um, yeah, uh, this is something that may come out a little bit lesser but you know it's it's still possible so I'm gonna be talking about ma manipulations that you can do with both modulus as well as arguments so um, this is very useful for questions where they will ask you something like you know calculate calculate this something like that. let's say z is 2 plus i and they want you to calculate this so obviously your first instinct would, would be to substitute it in and you know calculate it but you know, for the, in this case, it's kind of simple. But what if you have something like this? Are you really going to sub this in and try to divide it, and then you know try to do modulus on it? it it's going to take a while. So what you can do is that I'll just try to sub it in. Oops, sorry, sorry. Okay. So what you can do is let's say you can look at this. So you can go like z three plus i. And you can just split it up. 
and then you can just calculate the modulus of them individually and then you divide it all right so now so now this 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 whole table here is just to show you what can or can't be done um if it's not listed here it probably can't be done but you can just look it up um so z times w okay equals to mod um yeah i don't really know how to articulate it but if they're like multiplied together you can take the modulus out and put it individually so similarly with indices you can just like put it individually if you know they're multiplying each other so division you can put take them apart or put them together so same like this and you can just swap it around if you know there's there's a power there you can also just swap it around so this one um i forgot to write this but you can do this as well okay so that works as well okay so um yeah this disclaimer right there there is no mathematical link at least i don't think there is if there is just let me know um i just think they look similar and it just helps me to remember what to do or what i can do okay so now we're going to talk about arguments and um yeah basically i noticed this when i was studying it for the first time so you notice that when sorry when you're multiplying it you realize that you can split it apart when put a plus there so I, I said to myself wow this really looks like logarithms so when you know when you multiply it you can actually split it apart so when you're dividing it you can split it apart and put a minus there so again it looks like logarithms and you know you can also bring the power down which again looks kind of like logarithms so I thought it was pretty cool again I I, I don't think there's a mathematical, mathematical link it, I just remember it that way so um yeah more about like seeing links between topics trying to understand stuff rather than memorizing but you know i really don't like to memorize okay so um let's try an example so let's say they give you this w and they're asking to find argument of this right so what you can do first of all you shouldn't be substituting w in and just trying to multiply and divide everything you should be splitting it up like this right so argon i what's argon i so what you do is you plot i on an argon diagram so here's our imaginary okay you don't really have to do this but just just understand why argon argument of i is pi over 2 so i is 0 comma 1 that's i so it is a point like oh gosh like right here okay so if you look at what angle this makes it makes a 90 degree angle counterclockwise with the real axis so that's why we get pi over 2 and generally 1 plus i it's um it's a 1 comma 1 so 1 comma 1 if the y is equal to the x um tangent inverse 1 is always pi over 4 which is 45 degrees so um that's where you can just like you don't even need to like put it into your calculator you should like be able to see it don't worry if you can't calculate it totally fine so um finally argon w is uh yeah i'm now i can sub it in and do tangent inverse square three over three and i get pi over six we don't need to worry about which quadrant it is in because both of them are positive and it's the first quadrant so we don't need to worry about that so finally we have all these three numbers and just put them together and we get five pi over 12. Done. all right so um, the next topic I'll be talking about is graphing in the argon diagram but for now we are done with calculating modulus as well as argument so awesome so um, if you have any questions or, that, or any other things you want, to talk, want me to talk about maybe it's code, maybe it's math, maybe it's some math topic that you don't understand or something that you make clear in this video you know just shoot me down a comment, shoot me a comment below um, and I'll see you guys next time take care yeah and I'll see you guys next time bye